Hello. Hello. How are you this morning? Good, good. And how is Cyprus coping with, with, with COVID and, and so on? Well, the, we, we didn't have too many deaths, uh, deaths related to COVID. Um, people at the beginning used to obey the measures. Now they are a bit more relaxed. Um, they are worrying about the schools opening because there is no definite decision about students going back to school yet. It's the same here. It's the same here in New York. I mean, they delay. They've already, they just did another delay. Um, so, 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 introduce yourself. Tell me who you are, and um, that would be a good start for us. I'm Mario Kiriazis. I'm a medical doctor with um, specializing in gerontology. In other words, whatever uh, matter has to do with old age not just medicine for all the people, but also the biology of aging um, and other matters that affect all the people. Um, I used to work in England for quite a, a few decades, but now I'm back to Cyprus, where I am originally from. And I'm here and I'm doing different other things to promote my interest in aging. Tell me why you decided to specialize in gerontology. Uh, well, we're talking quite a few years now, in the early 90s, when um, I was looking to find a specialty that would be useful in the future. And because everybody's getting old, and uh, that everybody will have to go through it. So I thought, like a dentist, everybody has dental <laughs> problems. So it's a sure uh, um, specialization to follow. But I'm, I'm interested because I don't like, I like the challenge that nature offers us. Um, I don't like just being there and seeing all the people slowly, slowly going downhill. Um, and then we as humans don't have anything to offer. I want the challenge to find something to offer, to reverse this downhill slope. So this idea of, of, of nature, that, that nature offers us a challenge. I mean, there are some that, that says that we, that there are, that we have to um, succumb to the natural order of things. Um, what do you say to those people? Uh, what is the natural order? What is it? When people say it's natural for us to die, um, I question that. I don't think it is natural in one way, but um, why do we why do we have children? And children have their own children, and life continues through children. Uh, that's not natural then to die, because life continues. If life continues, then it's natural for us for our life to continue as well. So, so tell me about how you dovetail your work and. Um, maybe the milestones that you've seen in the last couple of decades that gives you hope, but also how this sort of dovetails into this, these ideas of transhumanism. Basically transhumanism, transhuman is a human that has, been, that has been augmented in some way. So there are different levels of augmentation. You can say if you wear glasses, you are augmented. Now I'm talking to you through a little, um, black thing, we are, our interaction is augmented and it goes all the way up to the, to the top. Um, there are different, different angles to approach the subject. I studied how, how we get old in the, in the biological sense. And also, I, I am not concentrate on biology alone, but I'm seeing the subject in a more open way, in more zoom out way. Um, many people concentrate on cells or on DNA and they say there are certain changes. Yes, there are those, age, those changes, but there are other factors as well. I'm not seeing only uh, from a reductionist point of view. I'm seeing it, I'm going back and looking at it generally from, from, from many different angles. What yes. is, so, so some of the some of the other factors. So give me sort of the 
to sort of sum up the other factors other than the biological that 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 that, that result in our aging. I, I had a little schematic representation of the other factors, which is useful uh, how they interact with each other because. In, in biology, we, we have those changes, but if those changes don't affect our life, then they don't matter. Um, or if we don't have those changes, if we find a way to cure those changes, but our society is unstable and somebody comes and kills us, then we are back to square one. Therefore, society has to be uh, in a um, safe, and progressing um, so society is one thing the other thing is um, technology we may have a problem with our biology we may have some illnesses related to old age but if technology is there to compensate for those losses then again it doesn't matter uh, so biology and technology are connected and again we can discuss this because this is the central part of my theory. Somebody may follow a very healthy lifestyle and take all the medication to avoid aging, but if they, if they have an accident and maybe don't die, but they injure their leg, then this affect their, can affect their mobility. Even though they are biologically intact, um, they cannot function properly, and that contributes to overall aging. So it's not just the biology we have to concentrate on, but all these other factors as well. Well, it just reminded me because, I mean, FM always used to say, you know, at, at, you know, at a certain point in time, you know, we will have these factors in order, but there will be accidents. That's the thing that many people confuse. Um, we talk about eternal life or in, indefinite life. Um, I don't believe that we will ever live forever. Uh, it's impossible because if we eliminate aging, which is the major killer, then we can die from drowning. We can, may go swimming and drown and still die, or from a car accident. So death will always be there, but the main aim is to eliminate the diseases and the problems that come with aging so that we won't suffer. We live and keep living until something else kills us maybe live for a hundred years, 500. If something else kills us, then so be it, but it won't be aging. Do you think, I mean, there's a lot of people who, who, who believe that, that if we remove these things, that life will be uninteresting or we won't have purpose. I mean, do you, do you subscribe? What do you say to those, to those, to those comments? Okay, so this opens a new chapter because, okay. In order to live longer, in my view, uh, it is not just a matter of pills or exercise or a good diet. In order to live longer, we have to keep our brain active. So if we keep our brain active and stimulated in a certain way, uh, according to our research, the brain activates the neuronal uh, stress response. So the brain gets stressed the same as we, when we stress our muscles, when we exercise. We stress our brain as well. So it creates these stress factors, which um, according to our research, go and repair different damage, damage in the body, including age-related damage. Therefore, in order to live longer, we have to keep our brain active. So it's impossible to be bored and, in a, uh, and dull in the mind and live longer at the same time. If you are not using your brain and you are interested and you get out to do things, then you won't live longer. So that's, that eliminates it. <laughs> so so by, by, by the natural order of things, as it yeah. were, I'm being, trying to be funny, but that, that in and of itself, Will eliminate this this lack of purpose that people use yeah. as a do things that are uh, meaningful in life try to influence other people and uh, in a positive way and keep pushing yourself up to the, the limits of your comfort zone so if you do that uh, the biology will change and that's one step towards living for, for a long time therefore if you don't do that you won't live in a long time 
I don't believe that tablets only or exercise only is the secret to living longer. It helps, but it's not the only one. It must help to be in Cyprus with the olive oil, the sunshine, the sea, the, the whole thing. That must be a good... Yeah, that in a way it is, but then um, it's so relaxed here and so hot that people tend not to think with their brain. They just sit drinking coffee. It's a nice time. You look at the sea and you relax. But uh, it, that's contrary to my uh, way of thinking. Uh, keep active, do things. It, it, we're living in, in a global pandemic that a lot of the experts say has been mishandled. And, you know, as a, as a, as a medical doctor and as somebody who's obviously been around and, and thinks about these things, what are, what, what, what's your, what, what are your, what are your takeaways from how the situation has been handled worldwide? We have a virus, which is like all other viruses. Sometimes it's more active, sometimes less. Um, but it is a virus, it is affecting people, people have died, but I think the response of the governments has been excessive. Um, and not only excessive, but at least in our country, and from what I can see in other countries as well, they haven't considered the side effects of these measures they are taking. Uh, one example is um, the lockdown. At the beginning of March, they said, okay, we are locking down the country. Nobody can get out. Okay, that may have helped the, the spread of the virus. But we have locked in their houses 100,000 older Cypriots. Uh, the, these people were on their own. It's so, social isolation is a known factor for increasing mortality and morbidity in older age. So we are seeing now people dying from the isolation. They have psychological problems, they are lonely, depression, anxious, and this increases cardiovascular risk. And together with some other factors, the morbidity and mortality in older people is increasing. And that's the same in other countries as well, I think. May I ask you, can I address that one? I mean, but obviously it's a balance because the people that were most affected or most at risk, as I understand it, were elderly people, people with respiratory and so on. So how do you balance like keeping those people safe and also this other factor, the psychological factors of isolation? I mean, this is a big question in terms of balancing those risks. Well, one thing the government should have done is to offer advice about psycho these psychological effects or the medical effects. The only thing we, we could hear from the government was to stay home, stay isolated. Uh, we can manage if we stay home, don't do anything. Uh, wash your hands. That's the way you wash your hands. You take it, you turn it, you put so much alcohol percentage divided by three. All of these instructions they were able to do. Why couldn't they have instructions or programs on television of how to address loneliness in social isolation setting or um, how to do exercises at home, specific exercises you can do at home and do it every day, every day. Yes. Um, and different other ways how to use the internet for people who don't know and inform the public about uh, measures which counteract these side effects of the lockdown. It hasn't been done. People stayed on their own and they, now they are dying. But also, I mean, I, you know, with other viruses, I mean, people have been warning about pandemics for, for many years, as far as I can understand yeah. it. And, and but because there, was, there wasn't, no one had, no, there wasn't one message. There was many, many messages mm. and many, and it's, in this country it's become politicized. I, I mean, I just, think that as somebody who's who's you know as a medical professional like there there were obviously things that we could have done better and i i wonder if this is does this give you hope or does this what where what are you feeling right now in terms of where we're where we're at okay it doesn't give me hope i'm very disappointed because i've seen people who are scientists or doctors or academics 
and they are very one, their mind is one-sided. They only think about one thing. Um, the example is how to, to stop the spread of the, the disease, but they don't think about the consequences of that. Also, there have been many contradictions. The experts contradict themselves. They say, wear masks, now don't wear masks. But stay at home, don't stay at home. So these contradictions, um, it makes me feel that they don't know what they are saying, basically. Uh, on the other hand, if we stay isolated or socially isolated from other people, then we are forced to use technology, digital technology. If we use digital technology, this is one step towards um, improving the future society because this is inevitable that we use technology. Whether we like it or not, technology is here to stay. So if we use it a few years earlier, that's one step faster towards becoming uh, transhuman, as you said it. Is so, I mean, as far as you're concerned, is that, is that, a, is that a, a positive goal for society as a whole? It, I mean, it strikes me that your approach is very holistic. It's not looking at one thing. And so yeah. this idea, which again, the way you describe it, it's like my transhumanism. Yeah, um, you're augmented in a way. I'm yeah. augmented. So, so, I mean, these, on the one hand, th th this has been mishandled. We're, 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 we're fractured and yeah. yet we're heading to this transhuman or augmented lifestyle you know, because we have to, in, in fact, because there are no choices now in this environment. So I'm, I'm, but I'm, I don't know whether you're saying, I know that you have criticisms, but I don't know whether you feel optimistic about our future or, or the milestones that you've achieved or the goals that you have. We are adaptable beings. We can adapt to any problems we have in front of us. So, I tend to see to see the positive in everything that happens, in negative things as well. Um, we may have had this problem with the pandemic, but as I said, there is something positive in it, and we should concentrate on that and see how we can use that to to enhance the humanity, not just stay with the negative. The negative doesn't help anybody or anything. Um, but the positive will help us improve overall. There are different, obviously, um, techniques or modalities for, you know, for preserving the brain, like cryonics and this idea of um, mind uploading and so on. Uh, where do you stand on these, 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 um, these types of things? I'm more concentrating on the aging aspect of it. For me, cryonics is not necessarily about aging, it's about death. So if you think about it, you're frozen, you escape death, and then in the future you're coming back again. Uh, so I don't concentrate as much on that aspect too much because it's not in my interest or in my sphere. Um, mind uploading, I again, I have my reservations because People see it as a simple thing to do. You you log into a computer, you download your thoughts, and you go away. But uh, we are not only our brain. We have the whole body. So now I'm sitting to you, talking to you. If my little finger is hurting, my, my little toe is hurting very much, then I'll be irritable, I won't concentrate, I will alter my behavior towards you. You'll get the wrong idea about me and your input would be different. So a little toe can affect what I am. Uh, this would be lost in mind uploading. Mind uploading is uh, only for the brain. And this is a small example, but there are other examples in the relationship of the bowels with the brain. Um, bacteria in the bowels can send, can send chemical signals to the brain and affect our behavior. Therefore, that there is a relationship with something that is not in the brain. In your view, that is limited, then that is not you because we're not capturing all, all these yeah. other pieces. And that's interesting. It, wh what do you think 
other than aging, which is obviously your field, are the biggest challenges that humanity faces? Everything I see with the within the sphere of aging, for example, let's say climate change, I don't care about the change of the climate. I care about how if, if this change is going to affect humans in the aging aspect so it's a difficult question for me because everything war if you think about war or peace or i don't know harmony or love they are all in my brain in my mind coming back to aging and how humans can live um, healthy for a long time so say i don't know let's say climate change if the climate changes and causes pollution uh, pollution can affect the sperm count, sperm people, the population will drop. Um, I leave it to nature, let her decide what mechanisms to use. But I don't believe that we'll be extinct completely. Nature will find a way to keep those who are left behind to live more healthily, to, to be stronger somehow. And, and there are, I have some ideas about that. So although climate change may cause many deaths, those who remain will be better off. I mean, it's um, a very sort of macro evolutionary perspective that we yeah. you know. I mean, but you can say the same with COVID, the people that have died from COVID or even the elderly people, you know, in Cyprus that were, are dying from depression and so on. The people that are left are going to be stronger, more resilient and so yeah, on. I mean, there's definitely... Yeah. That's natural selection. That's how it is. It's not my idea or I didn't discover it. I just see whatever I see and describe what I see. That's how it is. Well, I'm not sure if that's 100% true, because on the one hand, yes, you're saying the natural order, but you're saying we also have ways that we can interfere in those order of things. So, but you're, you know, so it's, yeah, it's a little right. bit more pragmatic than you're just saying, we'll leave it yeah. to nature. If we don't interfere, things will happen anyway in a certain direction. If we, if we interfere, then the same things will happen in the same direction, but there. That's how I see it. I mean, there's something very um, narcissistic, I guess, about our interference and our primacy. You know, I mean, we talk, you talk about climate change and all of these factors, and yet we're at the top of the pyramid. Well, because we're selfish. We want to. We want to continue. Our, we want to continue to uh, to be right. The, uh, talk about the ultimate, the ultimate purpose of of life on on life on Earth or any other life. What is the purpose? Why are we here? Why are we have cats or dogs or flies? What's the purpose? Um, there have been many discussions about this, and. I tend to agree that there is some kind of, not power or God or anything, but nature follows a certain path towards higher complexity, higher intelligence. I can see from the evol evolution of humans, we started in, with lower intelligence and slowly, slowly our complexity, intellectual complexity is increasing. So one way of seeing it is that life aims towards achieving higher intelligence without end, higher than us, higher than, and there are people who say that even stars exhibit certain characteristics of intelligence. Stars and with the exchange of um, energy and um, information and how the information influences other stars and so on. So it depends on how do, do you define intelligence. So if we take this as an example that nature aims towards higher intelligence. Um, we are in a in a privileged position in relation to the other life forms on Earth. So you can say we are it. We are the angels of nature, angels of God. Um, the other people, the other creatures, another life is here to support us in our quest. But we promote progress from there. It's, it's one way of seeing it. doesn't mean that I agree with it or not. And what's the other way? What's the way that you do agree with? What, 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 what is the balance of that? I'm open. I'm open to ideas. I'm open to discussions. Um, 
there is some evidence that is indeed uh, the, the case that we tend to achieve higher intellectual complexity, not to be cleverer, not to be to have higher IQ with time. But intellectual complexity uh, is, is higher if you compare um, humanity 100,000 years ago and humanity today, we, our intellectual complexity is higher. And this is, a, this is aided by technology as well. Um, I can tell my ideas that are in my mind and influence other people and um, accept their feedback and their criticism and improve myself in the intellectual sense. Therefore, technology is, uh, is helping in this way. The, the intellectual seems one aspect of it, but I mean, the other aspect, at least for me, in terms of what I value is, is empathy, is, um, is being able to connect with other people on a deep level, a, a way that you can get past differences. I mean, to me, that seems more in line with survival. As a species. Yeah. How, how is this going to help well, humanity? I think it, well, I think it will allow us to get along. I mean, if I see you and instead of saying, oh, he speaks a weird language and he's got a weird mm -hmm. moustache or whatever, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. like if I have the ability to look at you and say, you know, I'm, I see all the things that connect us whether mm. our eyes, are they, you know, and I see that first. I mean, that's going to put me in a better position to um, engage with you, sort out problems, uh, uh, endeavor to find challenges in ways that we both can work on those challenges. To me, that is as, if not more important than this intellectual ability to, you know, discuss and rationalize and so on. So what if we if we have empathy. So What's what? The point? Yeah. Why well, do I, we I, have it? Well, I think we, d we have it so that we can cooperate. I mean, from an evolutionary perspective, I think as much as we want to kill before we are killed, we also want to commune and get, you know, create villages, communities, cities, um, countries. Uh, thank you. Thank you. In other words, increase our intellectual complexity. Yeah, I get, I mean, you don't I build a big city if you are dumb. You build it if you are intellectually complex. Okay, I haven't I'm... seen any dogs p building a, a huge city because they're not that intellectually complex. So and... therefore our cooperation and empathy, is, is, they are just tools towards increasing our complexity in the future. In order to get to, I don't know what, what we're calling it, not Eden for sure, but this new level of complexity, there are these factors, and you look at them from, from, the, from the lens of, of aging and death. Um, are there other, are there, are there, are there how, what are the steps for us to get there? I mean, you said we've had some milestones, we've had some missteps. In order for us, you, your family, to get to this other place, what are there certain steps? If you were advising, I don't know, the, the United Nations or, or the World Health Organization, what would, the, what would the three or four things that you'd suggest to get yeah. us to this place? Uh, it's not simple because my advice will be tailored to particular groups of people. I can't go and, and tell my ideas to to many people who are living an everyday life, work, drink, eat, sleep, and have children. Uh, my ideas uh, will be modified to suit the people's lifestyle, uh, or the way they are living. Um, first of all, we, I, have a dif I, have, I differentiate between happiness and uh, this deeper level that you said of uh, empathy, uh, eudaimonia, epidemonia in Greek, eudaimonia. Um, I don't think uh, our purpose in life is to be happy, to, to look for happiness. So I can be happy now if I go and eat a nice meal, drink two whiskeys and uh, <laughs> see 
so I'll be happy, but how is this going to help humanity? If I drink two whiskeys, how is this going to be to help humanity? So it's not personal happiness that matters, but it's uh, thinking in a way to, to augment other people, not only technologically, but also uh, cognitively. By talking and sharing my ideas, I hope to influence other people who would think about things that they don't usually think, um, talk to me back, make me think about things that I don't usually think, and, and establish this relationship, or you can call it empathy or any other term you like, but it's mutual enhancement, mutual improvement, and this can be done exclusively, I think, through technology. It can be done uh, through face-to-face -face meetings. If we go to a face-to-face -face meeting now, uh, the waiter will come, ask you about coffee, you go away, other people will shout, it will interrupt the flow. Whereas now, you, if you are sitting there listening, and I'm sitting there listening to you, and I have to stress my, my brain so that to understand and create some some situation that would be useful to both of us. I feel enhanced. I feel enhanced by this conversation. You see, that's an example. We're, we're, we're doing it now. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this for the rest of my day. To, to all yeah. my conversations, I want to feel enhanced by them. It's not yeah. always. Yeah. That's my... Well, try your best anyway. I will. Thank you so much for your okay. time. And I really hope that um, your, your family and everybody is safe and yeah. well. We are all okay. And all the best to you as well.